We're in the trenches with Dave Lappin, presented by First Star Logistics. A little something different on a Monday afternoon. Instead of doing a post-practice report with Dave Lapham, we're going to do a pre-practice report because the news of the day is depth chart. Cincinnati Bengals release a depth chart, kind of give uh, the seniority guys a little nudge advantage going into the, the first preseason game, didn't they, Lap? Yeah, it's it's pretty common protocol, pretty common practice that the guys that uh, have the year's experience, the first depth chart that comes out, um, you know, they're going to be uh, they're going to be rewarded with. OK, it's it's still your job, but you got to go back out and earn it. So, you know, you look at uh, at the right offensive tackle position. Trent Brown is listed number one. Now, he didn't really he didn't take a snap at the Cincinnati Bengals last year, but he's going into his 10th year in the National Football League. So. He has taken a bunch of snaps. He's been on a Super Bowl winning team. He's been a pro bowler. So, you know, it's like, okay, young buck men's uh, got to earn it. Just like Anthony Munoz had to earn the left tackle position. Well, he earned it quickly. And men's is starting to earn it uh, quickly as well. We'll see how that how uh, that battle goes as Trent Brown does come back to the to the practice field. Looks like today uh, he will be uh, doing some individual drills. They're going to ramp him up. They're not going to throw him into everything right away. Um so that, you look at that, you look at Trent Norwin is, is listed as uh, the number first number three wide receiver when they go three receivers on their, on their depth chart, and that's how they uh, structure it offensively. they got Jamar Chase, who obviously hasn't taken a snap, and, uh, and, and uh, T. Higgins and, and Trent Norwin is number three. Now, and there's battle raging there. You know, Charlie Jones is going to have something to say about it. Yossi Rosh is going to have something to say about it. A lot of guys are going to have something to say about it. The rookie Burton. I mean, it's it's good. You know, you've got a battle royale going on there. And then on the on the defensive uh, side of things as well, at the, at the cornerback position, D.J. Turner ended the season as a starter. Well, that's that's where he is right now on the depth chart. He's, he's a starting corner along with Cam Taylor Britt, who just now got back to things after t- uh, tonsillectomy. Um, but Dax Hill is, you know, is right in that mix, obviously. And, and it's, it's, there's miles to go before anybody rests there. Um, and then the two veterans, Geno Stone and Von Bell, that they signed as veteran free agents in this offseason, they both get the, the number one position at that uh, safety position due to their experience as well. Tyson Anderson and Jordan Battle uh, are, are number two in that area. So, uh, and that, that obviously is, is a very, very key, important uh, position the the two safeties last year there were communication issues there that caused major problems and big plays as a result. Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt, Geno Stone, Von Bell, up the middle of that defensive football team. You know, just like we always talk about in baseball, you got to be strong up the middle, catch your shortstop, center field. Well, at shortstop, you know, I get Logan Wilson and Jermaine Pratt, shortstop, second base, and then in the middle of the football field defensively, you get Geno Stone and Von Bell. Those four guys are very, very, very strong communicators, and I think uh, I think things will be much different in that regard. I think teams are going to have to earn things a lot more than they did uh, than they had to last year. Unfortunately, they didn't have to earn it as much as uh, Lou Anaruma wanted uh, the opponents to have to earn it. So, and then you know, looking at it, Dave, too, is um, they have an opponent. They have a, a game against Tampa Bay on Saturday, so. This week, the structure of this week is is pretty much getting the guys in a, in a routine and a groove of what the regular season might look like, although the games are on Sundays, obviously, in the regular season. But, you know, you're going to practice today. Well, it, it would be a very light practice. Uh, it'd be a walkthrough, basically, during this regular season, even if they did practice on Monday. So it's going to be more than that, but it's not going to be um, very real taxing, I think. Uh, my understanding is there are four special teams periods down the stretch of the, of, uh, of the practice. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of downtime for for a lot of players when special teams are going on, um, you know, and let them rest their bodies and everything that goes along with that. We wanted to try to get their legs back. You know, anybody that's been worn down a little bit, taking a lot of snaps, you are going to try to get their legs back. Today's going to be not super taxing tomorrow off. Then Wednesday and Thursday are the big work days, the bigger work days, just like a regular season. Uh, Friday would be off in the regular season. It wouldn't be. There'd be a light practice on Friday, Saturday off, but they have Friday off Saturday game. So it's not exactly the same schedule, but you're going to try to get it as close as possible, try to get in the rhythm, uh, the mind and the body in the rhythm of that. And then after that, it's crazy because, you know, 
then you travel to Chicago. And now that, that week's a little, a little bit different. You're traveling on Wednesday. You're having, uh, you know, pretty um, intense joint practice on Thursday. And, you know, then you have the preseason game. And then the following week, it's on a Thursday night. So, you know, that, that there's not a true, you know, Sunday game schedule, but they're going to try to make this week as close to it as they possibly can because the other two, there are circumstances that prevent that from being the case. So um, it'll, be, uh, it'll be interesting to see how, how the guys respond, and, and I think everybody's going to have their legs back under them. And, again, Dave, I'll tell you, though, <laughs> Uh, on on Saturday against Tampa Bay, man, I don't know. I don't know if Sam Hubbard's going to go. He's uh, he's getting better every day, but I, I I would doubt they'd throw him out there after experiencing his problem with his knee hamstring attachment uh, scenario. And Trey Hendrickson hasn't gone. Cam Sample has got a long term injury. It looks like. I mean, they're, they're uh, like we were talking about uh, earlier. Miles Murphy and Joseph Asai, Cedric uh, Johnson. On the edge, you know, uh, Gunter is has had a little bit of a left knee issue. Is he's been in and out of practice? Well, how much will he be able to go? Uh, Justin Blazek, the, the rookie, will get snaps. I mean, they're they're very very thin at that edge position. So, young guys are going to be taking a lot of snaps. And that's that's pretty much the case, uh, you know, in that first preseason game anyway. But you, uh, if, if guys get nicked up, it's going to be interesting. These young guys, they're going to have to not only take snaps, they're going to have to. Uh, have to, if they do get nicked up, they're going to have to continue to play if they're nicked up uh, almost. It's, it's going to be an interesting dynamic there. Lap, one of the guys you've been talking about all through camp, listed third team cornerback, Josh Newton, the rookie. Uh, but he's been getting reps with the one, so he's been turning some heads. And really, as you said, I mean, right now, this is just the initial. By the time we get to week one, this depth chart may look totally different, uh, and, and especially in the backup area. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. I mean, um, I think this depth chart was made a long time ago, <laughs> and it, it has not taken into consideration uh, anything that's gone on in the early stages of training camp. And I think it was it was based based on seniority. I mean, that's 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 pretty much the uh, pretty much the case. Uh, the only rookies that are in in backup positions even are are Mims and Burton, uh, because you know there 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 were no veterans to to put ahead of them as such, really, you know, I mean, it's uh that, that, that's the only reason that they find themselves on the number twos defensively. There's no rookies uh, uh, listed number two at any position. All the rookies are, are listed, you know, third teamers, all the rookies, except for, for Mims and Burton are listed as third teamers offensively. I mean, that's, that's just, that's how it, how it went. That's how it's going. And, and that's the way it should be. You know, if you're a young buck and earn it, you know, it, it's not going to be given to you. Go out there and earn it, and and uh, at the kicker position, Robbins is number one, McNamara is number two, Rayco is number three. Well, that that makes sense because he was the last one signed, and you know, so that that depth chart is these depth charts have been made uh, a long time ago, probably printed a long time ago, but just released uh, today. So um, it's I, I don't think if I'm a player, and I'm sure the coaching staff is telling all these young guys, look, this is a this is a, a not, not fait accompli. We, we, we notice what you're doing. Keep working. We like what you're doing. Stay after it. Um, you know, don't get, don't get your dauber down. Uh, don't worry about who's first, second, third team right now. It's basically meaningless. It's worth the paper that it's written on. And that's, uh, that's how you have to approach it because yeah, there's, there's no question that on the, uh, on the back end, Josh Newton has got his hands on a lot of footballs. Uh, Dijon Anthony has three interceptions in the preseason. He's a leading interceptor. You know, and they're both third team uh, at uh, corner and safety, respectively. So, uh, yeah, it's it's just a rite of passage. It's uh, <laughs> in terms of training camp. That's just uh, that's just the the nature of the beast. The other thing, though, when, when you're talking about forming a team, that, that I'm always uh, interested in observing is how these guys all communicate and interact with each other off the football field. There's a lot of communication that's going on between the veteran and the young players on the football field. And all positive. Uh, you know, gee, I might have I might have done this based on his alignment. I might have tried to do this to get him out of position. I might have done this. Might have done that. There's a lot of that going on. Well, it's going on uh, in the uh, in the cafeteria. It's going on in the locker room. I mean, it's there's there's guys are sitting around uh, as a group. Some some of it by position group. Some of it receivers sitting with defensive backs. Offensive linemen pretty much are sitting together, old and young. 
Uh, there's a lot of good uh, information being exchanged there. Cornerbacks and, and, and receivers, there's dialogue being exchanged there in the locker room and in the cafeteria, you know. Yeah, what did, uh, how, did you, how did you make such a quick break on that, on that ball? Did I tip something in my route or, you know, whatever the case may be? And, and it, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, good information being exchanged. Uh, and and that's, that's part of uh, building a football team. And, and honestly, I think that's why the Bengals believe in, in um, you know, scrimmaging against another team and particularly doing it on the road. That's when a lot of bonding can occur. You know, you're, you're basically staying in, uh, traveling together, staying in hotel rooms uh, together. It might not be the exact same uh, rooming uh, pairing as it is in training camp. And that's the good thing about when you watch players in the, uh, in the cafeteria and in the locker room. Uh, it's, it's not based on position. Uh, in terms of position that you play on the football team, it's not pay, uh, based on your economic position, how highly or, or how far down the totem pole you're being paid on the football team. It's not based on, on race, religion. It's not based on anything. All it is is guys getting together and trying to make each other better from a football standpoint, building a team. And I always think that, that that's, uh, that's just a great example of, uh, of man, how – uh, different groups of people from different walks of life with different upbringings, different experiences can, can all unify uh, for the common good of, of, of making the team as good as it possibly can be. You're in the trenches with Dave Lappin presented by First Star Logistics. If you're looking for a career change, be sure to visit firststarlogistics.com to get the latest news on openings in one of the fastest growing companies in Cincinnati. And as Lap and I can tell you a great place to work. Lap, I tell you what, the um, Saturday's preseason opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, seven o'clock. Um, Zach Taylor is saying all the right things. I can only imagine what the crowd reaction would be. If number nine, Joe Burrow does take snaps in live action, something he really hasn't done during his career. Uh, but Zach Taylor was also talking about many of the starters taking reps on Saturday night against Tampa Bay. Yeah, I mean, uh, if Joe Burrow's playing, the offensive line is going to play as a group, that's for sure. And and a lot of the people that he anticipates uh, throwing the football to are going to play. I mean, they're going to surround him with uh, as many weapons as they possibly can. And uh, basically, if Joe Burrow plays, you know, everybody's going to get some playing time. Uh, it's just a matter of how many snaps. And it's not going to be the same number of snaps necessarily uh, for everybody in that regard either. You know, the other thing that, uh, that, that you know, I'd like to make mention of is, is still the continuity and consistency of the coaching staff. And now they, they, they're discussing, it. you know, they're, what, what's the best thing to do? And it, along with Joe, obviously, and other, other leaders. And that's the thing, the dialogue between Zach Taylor and his players. You've got a leadership committee. And th that dialogue is always wide open. And players are heard. You know, it's not just, okay, you talk, I'm not listening. They're heard. They're, there's really good exchanges that are going back and forth. And the continuity and consistency of the coaching staff, um, it's, you know, some some things that you did and some uh, schematics that you used in prior seasons are going to be revisited. Tweaks, added, deleted, in, including, okay, how do we avoid this slow start? You know, let's maybe let's increase the use of this package. Let's uh, let's forget about this back. Okay, maybe we need to approach it a little bit differently in terms of playing time in, uh, in preseason. I mean, all of that is is, uh, is a big factor. And again, uh, we've talked about this before, Dave. But four members of the coaching staff um, having played quarterback, I think, is is unique. You know, you get the head coach played quarterback, uh, Zach Taylor, offense coordinator Dan Pitcher played the quarterback position. Pass game coordinator Justin Riscotti uh, uh, played the uh, uh, played the quarterback position. Uh, the pass game coordinator, uh, the quarterback coach Brad, Brad Craigfield played the quarterback position. I mean, I think there's a huge amount of trust and respect with uh, Joe Burrow, Jake Browning, all the quarterbacks, and all of these position coaches. And like we talked about before, I can only imagine the meetings that they have at night. Man, it is high level dialogue football, you know. Because man, um, it's everybody's going to have input. Everybody's going to, um, you know, it, it's an equal opportunity thing. It's not a dictatorship. It, it's going to be, you know, what do we, what do we think collectively? What do we think as a group? So that, that's that's all. I, I think a unique scenario with respect to the Bengals coaching staff as well. You have been in the trenches with Dave Lapham, presented by First Star Logistics. 
do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button if you've not done so already. Also, hit the like button on our videos to help this channel continue to grow. And leave comments. We love comments. And uh, Lap, I'm going to let you go. you got a busy day ahead of you uh, with practice. I know you got some other uh, things you need to get done after practice uh, that people should be watching for. And we'll have some stuff from that uh, as well on In the Trenches with Dave Lapham. And, you know, it, it's it's that time of year. A lot of, lot of excitement going around and just a, not enough hours in the day to cover it all. Yeah, that's, that's true, Dave. Yeah, and tonight is a – we got a, a two-hour show with uh, Sirius uh, uh, XM Radio that covers the National Football League, and this is their, you know, training camp tour as such. So they're doing a two-hour show tonight from five to seven. Dan and I are are working on that on that show, and we're going to have um, it's a it's it's I think it's a very enlightening uh, lengthy interview with Joe Burrow. Uh, that that one uh, is is going to have interest I think uh, for a lot of people. We've got uh, Zach Taylor. We've got Duke Tobin will be live with us uh, in the first hour of the show. It goes from five to seven. I think Duke's going to be with us at uh, at five thirty. We've also got Vaughn Bell, Logan Wilson on the defensive side of it, talking about how important the communication that we were referencing earlier, you know, is. And uh, so it'll be a, uh, it, it'll be a, I think a, a fun time. And uh, we're looking forward to getting that done tonight. So we're working on it. We're, we're getting it together and, uh, and showtime starts in a few hours. He is Dave Lapham. You have been in the trenches presented by First Star Logistics. Be sure to stay with In the Trenches with Dave Lapham for content all during the week leading up to the opening preseason game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Lap, I'm going to let you go. Until next time, this has been Dave Burke for Dave Lapham. Who day? Who day, Dave? Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self motivation leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.